That's what it means to Jack Wilshire, Joe Hart and the England players. England lost 1-0 to the USA in Belo Horizonte in 1950, a result which never left Walter Winterbottom, the manager. Has to be said it'll be the same for Roy Hodgson after this evening in France. England losing to Iceland by two goals to one. How will English football recover from this? Here's the quarter-final line-up then. Wales against Belgium and Poland against Portugal in one half of the draw. Germany against Italy and France against Iceland in Paris in that quarter-final. So Wales still flying the flag for the home nations, which is great for them. Yeah. But, 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 <laughs> you know what, where on earth do we start with that? Well, you know, we, we, we start in, in the qualifying. Easily one of the, mo the easiest qualifying groups I've ever known England to be in. And we qualified at 10, 10 on the spin. I think we might, might have taken too much out of it. But to come out of that and still not have a proper system, your best team, and, was, and, and, and the way we've, we play today, you know, yeah, we had three decent games where I thought, yeah, a bit of un better bad luck than that, but... When you, when, you, when you boil it right down, Mark, that, was, that second half was... It was embarrassing, man. It was terrible. Ball going under people's feet and everything. It was embarrassing. Rashford came on and, you know what I mean, a bit of energy and injection of something. You know what yeah. I mean? You'd have thought maybe half an hour. He could have done that half an hour earlier. Did you, do you, sorry, do you put it back to the fact that maybe we saw different systems, different players in the run-up to the oh. championship, that it wasn't ingrained, that they weren't absolutely instinctively in the rhythm of the team? Listen, we've seen Italy, we've seen Spain, we've seen Germany in this tournament already. I know how Italy play. You can see how they play. I know how Spain play. I know how Germany set up. I know how they play. I don't know how we play. Now, ten wins on the trot, you're right, in qualification. And we're still going into the Portugal game before the last... Uh, friendly before we came out here, he played a system that they didn't seem to know what they're doing. Vardy was tracking back, Kane was tra was tracking back. That was the, the the game before we came out here, so we still didn't know how we were going to play when we got here. There's two parts of of the game. There's attacking and defending. We didn't produce in the attacking third. We created chances, didn't score in the qualifier in the three games leading up to this one. So we failed in that respect. We weren't tested defensively in those three. <laughs> the first time we got tested. The first time we got first tested. In, in the attention to detail, the first throw-in in the second half after we conceded a goal from a throw-in after we scored, we knew exactly what we'd done, the mistake. We go in at half-time. The first throw-in in the second half, Rooney was still marking the same player on the edge of the box. And we'd already conceded that. They didn't throw it to him in the end, but they were still set up. So nothing's been said again. I just don't, I just Do you think don't... there's a lack of direction from the management then well, in the last yeah. When you go in at half time, yeah. you expect somebody to go crouchy. Yeah. You expect somebody to go, this is wrong, this is wrong, yeah. this is wrong. But it, it didn't seem to be said. I thought the sad thing was um, Iceland looked more organised than, mm. than us, you know? And I mm. think uh, the players we've got, the, you know, the amount of ability that have experience, uh, you know, playing in the Premier League, um, some of those players are part, <coughs> part time. You know, it's. It is embarrassing. There's no, there's no dressing it up. Um, well, it just goes to show as well, Crouchy. They know what system they're playing. So no matter what level you're playing, if you know what you're going to be doing, you're kind of in that system. Of what you're, you, you know what you're going to be doing. Your role in it. We, we have to mention the Premier League at some stage. Next season, the champions get 150 million pounds in prize money. I know that only 33, 34 percent of those on a Saturday when you play are eligible to play for England. But it's the richest league in the world. It's awash with money. Iceland don't have any professional clubs. And they've beaten England. Yeah, but you, you, you say that as there, there has to be a fundamental fault line running through our game. If, on the one hand, you have an exceptionally wealthy league, and on the other hand, you have a national team that underachieves so regularly. I, I don't think there's a fundamental fault. I think it boils down to pressure. We're watching players that Harry Kane was, how many goals did he score in the Premier League this year? It was unbelievable. He was doing things that, putting free kicks over, over the bar and doing things that we've never seen him do. Wayne Rooney a couple of times misplacing passes. He's a world-class player, you know. It was, it, you, can, you can only put it down to pressure. It, but what, if, if, you've, if you've got a system that you... If you're playing badly and you're playing in a system that everybody knows and everything, you can kind of work around certain problems. If then that... If you're not quite sure of the system and you're, and you're playing poorly and then your technique starts to go and the pressure builds because of what's coming after this, after this defeat, then things like this happen. You start to lose. You start to lose the basics, and the basics. I mean, bad control, bad passing, bad decision making, 
little things that, that, that creep into your game when the pressure starts to build. But what does it say about the players that they can't deal with the pressure? That's the question everybody at home This is the worst I've asking. seen of, of a team. What, what does it say about them that they can't deal with I, the pressure? I, and having, I, I take your point that they play very well in the league, but what does it say about them that they can't deal with it on this stage? Well, it, it takes everything to make a player. It takes technique, it takes the ability to be brave on the ball, to want the ball when the pressure's on. And, and for some reason, tonight, they collapsed in the second half. They couldn't get round them, the Look, passing was slow. None, none of the players started like this. You know, we didn't start like this at all. You know, his first half was, was yeah. OK. Terrible. You know, it was OK, but this, this just started creeping in and it was, it was unbelievable. You know, you, you talk about the, the, money, the money side of it, and I think what, what Leicester have proven is that... It really, it doesn't really make much of it. It comes down to application <coughs> and, and motivation. What, what Ranieri gave those Leicester players at the start of the season tonight, it didn't come down to money, it came down to the players performing. That's what it came down to. They did not perform. They're rubbish in this game today, rubbish. <coughs> This game wasn't like the Slovakia game where we sat here and went, you know what, we, we battered them. Yeah. We were unlucky today. We got beaten by, by be the better team yeah. today. England fell apart, didn't they? The yes. Second half. They completely yes. fell apart. Absolutely. No other word for it. When seeing the ball going under people's feet like that, fell apart. You, you, you would think after that first half and the mistakes that they made, the two goals were awful. They really were awful. You would have thought in the second half they would have been an improvement. But in, in effect, when you look at the second half, how it was, it was worse because technique, technique wise, mm. they fell apart. They, they couldn't put two passes together. They didn't create anything with any width. They didn't have any speed to their play. So that, you know, that, the, the players have to take responsibility mm. for that as well. Yeah. They're, 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 the senior players who are playing mm. for their country, who played a lot of cap, they've got to go, do you know what? I mean, Wayne Rooney won't come off that pitch and go, well, I did all right. No. You know, he'll be, he'll be dis distraught. But why, why the reason was they all did it together. That needs to be couple, answered. A couple of chances right at the end, you know, by which stage it's just, you know, it, it, it's just going forward in as many numbers as possible, isn't it? Because it was, was so frantic, Peter, wasn't it? Yeah, there, was, there were some chances, um, you know, half chances, I suppose. But that's, I was pleased with, with, that's good with Rashford. When Rashford and Vardy, Vardy came on and gave us something, when Rashford came on, he had five minutes, but he looked, he looked very, He's very sharp. He's trying to take people on, making people, committing people. people. That's a great effort. Joe Hart gets in the way, doesn't he? he does. I mean, I know he's trying his hardest to make amends. Of course he is. But yeah, you, I think he's just slightly put him off there. But um, you know, the players will be devastated. I've been, I've been there when you've been knocked out. It's, you know, they'll be gutted, and people say, "Oh, there's no pride, there's no yeah, passion. They yeah. don't want it enough." It's all rubbish. You know, the players will be yeah. gutted. As uh, it's a good point to make. However much money they earn, whether they're on five pounds a week or <coughs> 150,000 pounds a week, they will be devastated. I, I've won't been, they? I've been there, and I know that people say, "Oh, they, you know, they don't care. They haven't yeah. got the passion, and you know, they get they're overpaid, prima donnas. You know, but." God, you know, they care, you know, they're going to yeah. be gutted. They're as gutted as we are in the studio yeah. and as gutted as everyone else. Because can. this will stay with them, won't it? I yeah. Mean, that's the reality. I was talking about Walter Winterbottom in 1950, yeah. which had some great England players in it. You know, whatever they do club-wise, which is brilliant, people will never forget, you were the team that lost to Iceland. You didn't no. lose to Germany in the last 16, you lost to Iceland. I lost to the USA with Graham Taylor. I, I was, that I, was bad enough. I yeah. did as well. Boston, weren't we? Yeah. That was horrible. It's your but... fault. But that, that was a friend. <laughs> that, ugly for you. That was a friendly, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? When, just when, when people were talking about the players, not what I saw, what, what they were doing there. Someone was waiting for someone else to, to do something yeah. to pull them out. They were they were petrified. You could literally yeah. see it. The, 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 the petrified. Real spark, the real spark was Rashford. Really came yeah. on. He just didn't get enough time. OK, and it's the biggest day in Iceland's football history, no doubt about that. The one thing we haven't touched upon, which Sven Joran Eriksson did and Fabio Capello did, which was, you England players are always exhausted after a long season. No one is making an excuse here. Is that a reality at all? Does a long Premier League season take its toll any more than it would in the Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A? I don't care. I don't really care. I think, you know, we're, it's the time. if you start making excuses now, saying, yeah, it's a long season, it obviously has an effect, but it, it didn't have an effect on tonight's game. That wasn't the reason why they didn't, they didn't lose tonight because they've had a long season. They lost tonight because they were yeah. abject in their performance. <laughs> yes, and Iceland played the same team in four games. If anything, they, they should be tired. You know, so I, I, we, can't, we, can't, we can't really go down that route. I don't know what to say. I honestly don't know what to say. What, 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 <laughs> just give us a sense of, a, a, of an idea. When you're playing in a team, a bit like a, a sandcastle being washed away by the incoming tide, it's just collapsing around you and well, there's nothing you can do well, about it. Well, the only why time, is that? What is that like? The only time, I don't know. I'm not saying that Crouchy Crouch played in the <laughs> <sports. laughs> Crouchy, what is well, that like? I played in the England team, <laughs> friendly in Boston when yeah. we lost 1-0 and you could feel it happening. Yeah. But These boys were Arsenal for years. I played in a few of those. 
sorry, I was just saying that. But um, no, yeah, when it is collapsing around you, there are, there's times where you, you can't do anything. Everything's going wrong. Does it feel it? like there's a sort of exterior force which is gripping the game? That's exactly right. I mean, it, you know, this good, good players just, you know, doing fundamental errors, you know, and. Uh, you know, it's happened to it's happened to me in teams before. Um, and Crouchy, you know, do you start then? Do you start looking around the team for somebody to go? Do right, I'm going to sort because I did when, yeah. when when that happened with us. Now I used to look at Tony Adams and go, Tony, what do we do now? <laughs> and he'd something had come, you know, he'd do something. So or, did England lack a character tonight to wrestle them out of that? Someone abyss? Needed to, they need almost like, like they needed a shake. Yeah, mm. someone needed to shake them. I, but the, the one player that tried, I think, was Rashford when he came on. I just felt that he was yeah. he just added something different. He was going past people mm. and he was trying to do things that that others didn't there was a serious lack of movement um, you know in the forward areas and uh, you know he provided something a little bit different but you know it's five minutes it was, it was nowhere near enough for him but but we're England lacking a John Terry a Terry Butcher a Brian Robson you know a Tony Adams is that what they were lacking this evening somebody either literally or metaphorically to shake them out of this torpor well no, normally as well you might look at Wayne Rooney as a, the talisman of the team and say okay he steps up and you kind of do something, being the character he is, the amount of caps he's got. But he, second half, I, I almost you know, felt sorry. Every single thing he did seemed to come off his shin, his passing. <coughs> everything went wrong for him in the second I, I, half. I, can't, I just can't stop thinking about the film Space Jam. It's like the monsters <laughs> nick their talent or something <laughs> in the second half. <laughs> it's literally unexplainable what's yeah. happened to the lads in the second half. Yeah. Yeah. It's devastating to me. I yeah. can't believe it. Yeah, bit of, bit of gallows humour. I think we can understand why. Jeez, and, and Joe Hart unbelievable. this championship as well. I know. You know the free kick with Gareth feel, Bale and the goal you there. You feel for him because like, he seems like one who, who, who is somebody who wants to charge up and get it going. But he was, uh, I thought he was a little bit too charged right, up. He's, right, he said when the national anthem was being played and they went along the line and Joe always sings it, you know, really fervently and he, we looked at him and he seemed so pumped up and he yeah, went he needs to calm down he yeah. seems a bit too pumped up and you know it wasn't long before he made that mistake i don't know if that's any relevant or tense. Not. it must be te must make you tense mm. more tense mm. so where do england go from here peter uh, well that's a difficult thing obviously apart not, from home, home. <laughs> yeah. yeah you yeah. can't make uh, any knee-jerk decisions i mean you asked me about who who the next england manager is going to be I, I can't give you an answer I, I could not tell you who i think would be best to be England manager to, to lead us forward. So I think the FA, yeah, they've got to sit down, they've got to look at it, um, they've got to weigh up the options and, and take their time. You know, we haven't got a, <coughs> a tournament for a while, obviously. Um, you know, we've got to take stock from this and, um, and, and move on. I, I World think, Cup qualifiers at the beginning yes, of September yeah. and Scotland in the group as well. I, th I think they'll, they'll probably go with Gareth now, if, if it's interim or whatever, but I think they'll probably go with him because he's just the natural next person to come, I think. It's all right. We've got Slovakia away first qualifying. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll be OK. But, you know, it's a part of the problem is the Premier League season will start and everyone will go, great, who are Man United going to buy? What's Mourinho yeah. going to do? What's Guardiola going to do? Is this forgotten sometimes in English football? You've lived through it all so quickly because of our obsession with the league game. Yeah, it will be. I mean, straight, the, the papers will be full of it for the next you know, few days and travelling home. Every, the players are going to see all that and all, all the stuff that's going to come on social media, all of that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, you've just got to calm yourselves down and then we, we go again. You've got no choice. You go again. All right, gents.